Hello everyone and welcome back. Let's get this party started. Ah, diplomacy went up. And batteries are low. It's clear the Davidians are more of a problem than we initially thought. We know they're in the neutral zone. Now we know they're on Drazana Station as well, and according to Zamara, there have already been deaths there. In addition, she indicated that the lower levels of the station were a trouble spot. Those levels aren't used as part of the club there, and they haven't been maintained for years, and Ferengi are, of course, quite reticent to put any effort into maintenance that isn't absolutely necessary. That means we don't really know what's down there. Zamara's code should get you access. Take a lift down and check it out. Previous Starfleet encounters with Davidians have indicated that they will create nests around the temporal portals they use. So keep an eye out for anomalies. If we find the portal, we'll know where and when the Davidians are feeding. Oh, and I expect it to be messy down there. 
don't forget to take an emergency beacon. Ooh. Until next time. This is a good mission. And it's pretty good I'm playing this at night, so... If you really want to scare the pants off you, you should play this um, mission at night with no lights on. Welcome to Jordana. That's a dead Ferengi.
door is locked. Alien hoof spiders. Okay. That's right, this way. Then this way. Door locked behind us, huh? Log entry supplemental. The 
The strange power fluctuations are related to the problems in the power subsystems on the upper decks. So I'm looking into the possibility of feedback damage or spikes in the environmental systems. It could take some time to find the problem and make repairs, though. Particularly if I need to use the replicators to create replacement components. My ballad is low to allow use of the replicators for anything more than blood wine and vermilion sand dunes. This is dirty, uncomfortable, and thoroughly disagreeable work. Naturally, as soon as the job involves mucking around in the recycled atmosphere and waste processing, I get the short straw. Ooh. Someone's not happy. That's yeah, Starfleet personnel. That's somehow still able to breathe. There it is. Hello. Let go of me, come on. Oh. 
Bani Ken, Bani Ken, I see the Bani Ken, Bani Ken, but we do. I knew that was coming, but it still scared the piss out of me. He just vanished. Okay, why aren't you attacking like nobody do? There you go. Not try, you just ran into the fire.
dog entry supplemental. The strange pa All right. Down we go. Hello. I'm running with Davidians.
Oh, sorry. Welcome to... Now that we know the Davidians have a portal to the past and approximately where they are focusing their attention, I see no other choice than to send you and your crew back there to stop them before they kill again. I'll be honest, time travel is a tool. At times, it is a useful one. I know Starfleet has hundreds of regulations about temporal incursions, but 
My job is to preserve the Federation, not make Admiral Quinn and the rest of the suits at Starfleet Command happy. If we break a few rules along the way, so be it. I need to make some preparations before you can proceed. I will contact you when the time is right. Drake out. Until next Congratulations, time. Congratulations, Admiral. Obviously, the Davidians have found a way to harness this surge of triolic energy. The existence of the Davidian portal means they're traveling freely between the station in the present and in the past. Since 23rd century technology can't detect the Davidian phase shift, that time period is rife with potential victims. The only choice now is to stop the incursion at the source. You'll have to take that portal into the past and find out how the Davidians are creating this new surge of triolic energy. Stop them and find a way back without altering the timeline. Don't worry about temporal investigations. I'll pull a few strings. They'll never know you were gone. Best to keep your team small, just in case. Until next time. Your list of available specializations can be seen here. Select any of them to show details about the abilities and bonuses they offer, and to spend specialization points to advance your captain. The progress bar reflects your specializations provide extra abilities. All abilities cost a single specialization point. You can assign one specialization as primary and one as secondary. All purchased abilities from your primary specialization are enabled. Only abilities from tiers one and two of your secondary special. Additional abilities may be purchased from any specialist. If you have purchased all available abilities, additional specialization points will be automatically converted to dilithium ore. Okay, in this mission, we will actually meet two people, one of two people, of the original series. But I'll save which two for later. As I bounce into the station.
There's a window there, that's why I can't get in. shouldn't have let you come down to this level. How did you get here? You should have used the intercom to call for assistance. It's not safe to move about the station during a medical alert. Follow me. I'm going to call security for an escort. Hmm. I guess you're right. Look, just go up to the maintenance lift, get to the emergency medical center as soon as possible, and get checked out. There's a doctor up there who has set up a triage center for the affected <laughs> Wait for the patrol to pass. Lock the door. I need to head back around. Processor as well. It can even work in parallel with the computer core's main processor. Here, I'll show you. That's odd. The core isn't responding to my request. I need to go talk to Lieutenant Myers. Make sure you get up to the quarantine area and get checked out by the doctor. Hey, time for a little puzzle. Direct power. Large status static discharge plate. Lock safety cage. Move monitor. There we go.
Hold it right there. I guess I do gotta attack them. I don't want to. Dr. Leonard H. Bones McCoy.
Now I gotta talk to Leonard McCoy again. So Driffin's Comet is the source of the triolic radiation. That explains a lot. However, we cannot simply destroy it in our time. The Davidians have the means to go back to the 23rd century and harness its energy there. However, that will be their only other chance. Before that, there's no Drozana station, so there's no place that will be close enough to the comet's trajectory to be of use to them. The only logical solution is to alter the past. Destroy the comet there and save the Federation. As it happens, I have access to a way to transport your ship back to the 23rd century. It's risky, but I think the odds are in your favor. And if they aren't, there's always time for another try. I'll make the arrangements. Stay in touch. Drake out. Until next time. Until next time. Okay, this will be the last mission for tonight. Welcome to Tosana. Ah, oh, missed five.
I've missed five again. I never fail at this. Attention, unidentified ship. I am Commodore Jacob Ross in command of the USS Reuben James. We have been searching for a Klingon vessel reported to have attacked a colony in the Gliese system. You fit the description of the ship we are looking for. Unless you can prove you are not, we will take immediate action. And this is where we'll meet the other character from the original series. A Klingon cowering? That's weird.
not intend him to stop us. We hunger. We must feel. Leave immediately, or I will amplify the time distortion and destroy this nation. You will not survive. Hey, th those things are holed up in the lounge, and they've got some of my customers in there with them. The door is barricaded, but a few hits with a phaser should take care of that. Get my people out of there! Lieutenant Commander Scott, voiced by his son. Thanks for the help, friend. What were those things? Uh, that spirit snuck up on me. I noticed a spike in triadic energy, and I was working to adjust the station's shields to compensate. I went to fetch a hyperspeller, and I was attacked. If you help me, I can finish my repairs before the triadic energy reaches lethal levels. By the way, you can call me Scotty. Just as I suspected, the triolic energy is increasing. We'll be cooked like a haggis if we don't do something about it. There is a wee store on this station. The last who runs it, Cassidy, said they might be getting a supply of the new quantum flux regulators. The Mark II versions. If we had one of those regulators, I could modify the flux coordinating sensors and use them to modulate the shields protecting the station. That would buy us some time. Go find Cassidy. She'll know where they are.
What were those things? They were floating, and then one looked at me, and I feel so weak. And then it lifted me up, and it was horrible. Are you looking for something from the store? A quantum what? I'm sorry. I'm just too scared right now to think about selling anything. I'm closing down until I get my wits about me. Maybe it would be best if I packed up and went back to Sherman's planet. I don't know. Maybe a nerve tonic would soothe me. Can you get one for me? What can I get you? A nerve tonic? Almost every culture in the galaxy has nerve tonics. Most worlds have multiple variations, and everyone thinks that the one their grandmother made is better than all the rest. Look, I tend bar at a commerce station in the middle of one of this quadrant's busiest trade routes. It's my job to be able to make anything you want, but uh, you gotta be specific. I could make you 14,647 different nerve tonics, 18,397 if you're bullying. So, uh, what kind do you want? Tell you what, one of the waitresses should be able to help you narrow down what kind of nerve tonic would be best. Talk to one of them, and then come back. I'm sure we can make exactly what you need. Who do you think you are? First the lights go all strange, then these weird creatures show up, and worst of all, you're here picking fights with my best customers. Look at dear, brave, handsome Captain McQueen here. He could have been killed. You should be ashamed of yourself. Nerve tonics. How can I think about nerve tonics when my sweet Captain McQueen is injured? Well, if you want to know about any sort of exotic beverage, go ask that drunken Scotsman. Uh, I mean, Lieutenant Commander Scott. He knows more about alcohol than anyone I've ever met. While you do that, I'm going to make my sweet prince all better. <laughs> and you're Orion. Wow. Did you get the quantum flux regulator? Nerve tonics? Ah, you don't look like you need one of those. These wee beasties are troublesome, but they're not as bad as a ship full of angry Romulans. Now, I have been known to enjoy an occasional nip of scotch whiskey. That's the only nerve tonic you'll ever need. Why do you need to know about them? Yeah, and I'm Romulan. <laughs> oh, for Cassidy. Now that makes sense. She's a bonnie lass, that Cassidy. And more than willing to spend a little time with the right Starfleet officer, if you know what I mean. But she hasn't got the stomach for fighting. Is she all right? I hate for anything to happen to her. Glad to hear it. Sounds like she needs something to take a wee bit of the edge off. And that happens to be one of my specialties, along with transwarp transporter technology and warp field mechanics. Cassidy's been meeting me every evening in the bar for a spot of cheer, but I've never seen her order a nerve tonic. Perhaps if I told you what she likes, you'll be able to figure out the right mix. The bartender will help you. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy didn't like the salty taste of the Albion brandy, but she really enjoyed the fact that it was garnished with a drop of honey that floated on the top of the drink. Bah, garnish is getting in the way of a fine beverage, if you ask me. Can you imagine putting a wee piece of pineapple in a glass of 20-year-old single malt? It's preposterous. I've seen Cassidy order. The only time I saw Cassidy ordering blood wine was when she was feeling under the weather. Poor lass. She liked that it was served warm, but she hated those blasted heavy metal mugs the Klingons use. And the potency of it was a bit much for her to handle. A girl like Cassidy needs something with a little less kick. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. The lay brought Cassidy a Denevian mead a few nights ago. Ugh, terribly sweet stuff. Like drinking syrup. Cassidy didn't like the cloying sweetness, and the wee bird broke out into highs because she was allergic to the fruit garnish. I'm not ordering any of that stuff again. I've seen Cassidy order the Cassie and I got into a drinking contest with a Klingon one night, and we ended up drinking pyro wine. It's not as good as scotch, mind you, but it's better than drinking warp core coolant. The next morning, after she picked herself up off the floor, Cassidy told me that the fire wine was so spicy that she was afraid that it'd eaten a hole through her stomach. I had to send her to see Bones for a checkup. Also, she said that drinking from those shallow bowls made her feel like someone's pet targ. I've seen Cassidy order these dirty martinis on my cup of tea, as it were, but Cassidy seems to like them. She appreciates that a martini should be served as cold as possible, but since she nurses her drinks, the cold tends to dissipate, and she doesn't get the full effect. She 
He's quite fond of those fancy stem glasses, though. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy really likes the Sumerian sunsets, mostly because of the sour taste. She hates that the drink is so weak, and has been trying to convince the bartender to add garnish to it, to make the happy feeling last longer. But he won't, because then it wouldn't be a Sumerian sunset. Me? I say a drink is a drink. If the lady wants a garnish, give her one. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy really likes a little pick-me-up of a drop of Skagarian whiskey. But she doesn't like the wee shark glasses, or the silly paper umbrellas. Who ever heard of putting a wee paper umbrella in a glass of whiskey? It's sacrilege! If I ever go to Skagara, I'm gonna give them a piece of my mind. If I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Okay, let's hope I remember all this. I did this correctly. Do you have a drink for me? Oh, I love warm drinks. They're so relaxing. Mmm, there's a lovely sour note to this drink. I feel so refreshed. There's just enough oomph to this drink to make it really stick with you. I like that. I love the style of this glass. It accentuates the flavor of the ingredients. Honey, oh, that bit of sweetness is just perfect. Yeah, it first adds try. The most delightful note to you. Ah, that is marvelous. I'm feeling much better now. Thank you. What tool was it you needed? A quantum flux regulator mark II? I have one of those right here. Please take it as a thank you. tool for the right job. I'll start making the adjustments, but I don't know if I've got enough time. You can't change the laws of physics. The trialic energy levels keep rising, and centers show the blasted comet is to blame. Modulating the shields is not going to be enough. Something needs to be done about that comet if we're going to live to see the morning. of Duras. I am Captain Bavot, son of Warot, and leader of my house. My brother died due to Duras' treachery. I will avenge his death with the destruction of a hundred Duras ships. Prepare to die!
And mission complete. If you are receiving this message, then you and your crew have completed your mission. Driffen's Comet is destroyed, and the Davidians are no longer a threat to the Federation. You've done well. And, to prove that I'm not the immoral monster that some make me out to be, I'm going to help you. When you last docked at Deep Space K-7, I had some modifications made to your vessel. One of those is the addition of a Borg Temporal Node salvaged from a cube in the Batron Cluster. It's set to return you to our time. Congratulations on a job well done. Drake out. Excellent work. I knew I could count on you. The disappearance of Driffen's Comet in the 23rd century will be a scientific curiosity. I have taken steps to suppress information that might reveal our involvement, and I trust that you and your crew will refrain from telling stories about what happened here. After all, we're getting along so well. One thing I hope you'll take away from all this is that any opinion you may have of the immorality of so-called rogue elements like Section 31 is a bit naive. Contrary to popular opinion among some Starfleet officers, we do not spend our days plotting evil and committing random acts of villainy like characters in a bad hollow novel. We protect the Federation from threats. Thanks to you, the Davidians are no longer on that list. If you think about it, everything we do is to preserve the freedoms you so enjoy. You should be grateful. Drake out. Okay, so that's it for the night. Everybody have a great night, and I'll see you next time.